Hi, we're at IBC 2023 and we're at the Aperture booth and we're going to take a look at some big lights. LensVid coverage of IBC 2023 is brought to you by Ulanzi Video Accessories, Small Rig, Small Rig Big Dreams, Jiyun Make It Real, and Godox Embrace Creative Possibilities. Hi, we're at IBC 2023, and we're here at the Aperture booth with Brandon Lee. Hello, Brandon. Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. It's nice to see you again here in uh, yes, IBC. Yes, good to we see you as well. And you have, uh, I think, two new big products that uh, you announced a little bit earlier this year. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about them? Yeah, so this year at Sydney Year Los Angeles, so earlier in this year at June, we introduced for the first time our new product line. So it's the first time we've introduced a new product line in a while. So that's the Electrostorm product line, and that composes of two lights and two accessories at the moment. So the Electrostorm CS15 and the Electrostorm XT26 are the two cornerstone lights of this product line. The CS15 um, stands for color, spectrum, and 1500 watts of output. So that's basically a full color 1500 watt output LED. And that means that it's basically a comparable to a 1.8 kilowatt HMI or 2.5K HMI but with full color capabilities and super high spectral fidelity. That's because of the spectrum. The inside this LED chipset, we use the same dual blue emitter technology that we tested out and debuted in the Amaran product line, the Amaran 200XS, for example, which has excellent color quality. So the CS15 has a daylight D56 SSI of 86 and a tungsten SSI of 89. So this means that amongst the bright lights and amongst all the LEDs, this is some of the highest spectral color quality as well as in some of the highest output power. And then of course, next to what we have behind me, the XT26. The X stands for crossfade, so that's the bicolor control that you're used to seeing. But the T, that's the new addition here, that stands for tint control. Because this uses a WWG LED system, which means that it's bicolor or dynamic white with white light control through CCT, through 2700 Kelvin, through 6500 Kelvin, as well as some green magenta shift control as well. So that's both of these two lights in the Electrostorm lineup. And the Electrostorm lineup represents a lineup that we've decided to design for the professional chief lighting technician, for the professional high-end production, for the rental houses that needed something that was super rugged, super durable, and had all the features that they needed. So to start off, you might notice this big Fresnel behind me on, so on top of the XT26, and that right here is the F14 Fresnel. So it mounts onto the XT26 and the CS15. They both share the same accessories using the new aperture mount. So the new aperture mount is another take on the Bowens mount, basically expanding it, making it more robust, more rigid, but also more functional. So on top of the mount, you also have some electronic contact points, very similar like you would have in the lens mount, where when it communicates to your lens, it says, hey, I'm a 24 to 105. Hey, I am a 24 to 70, 2.8. This is the lens profile you should use when you're doing any corrections for me. And just like those cameras and those lenses, the CS15 in particular as a full color fixture, can actually make those corrections. So for example, if you take the narrow 20 degree beam angle light a reflector, it can say, oh, I have a profile for that. This reflector tends to adjust my color temperature plus or minus a few hundred Kelvin and adjust my green by a little bit this much. So let me bring it back within a range of uh, margin of error. So maybe plus or minus 200 Kelvin, but let me bring it back. So you get as neutral of a light as possible for the color temperature or for the mm. color that you selected. Mm. And the same thing goes for the XC26 with this green magenta shift, though the amount of variability and control is not as much as a full color light, but the same thing still applies. Now, then you have something like the F14 Fresnel, where the, it's not just communicating a data profile, it's communicating information back and forth, as well as power, delivering power. So it's able to tell the motorized F14 Fresnel exactly what beam angle it should be at, so what position the glass should be at for the desired beam angle, and then uh, additionally, it delivers the power for the motor to mm. operate all through those electronic contact points. Cool. Now, the electronic contact points don't only live in the aperture mount, which by the way, is paired with a Bowens mount in these two lights, the XT26 and the CS15. They have both the aperture mount and a Bowens mount, so mm. they have a hybrid mounting system. The electronic and motorized components expand to the electronic motorized yoke, which we have on showcase on the CS15 over there. So the motorized yoke is an accessory where you can, of course, remove the yoke from the XC26 or the CS15. This, there's also another yoke for the F14 for now for mm. better balance as well. Mm. But the motorized yoke is, allows you to use either of those lights alongside the F14 for now and really allow you to remotely adjust your pan and tilt. So you can 
do a full pan, a 360 pan in about eight seconds, and then 270 degrees of tilt in about 10 seconds. And if you're very high with the light, obviously you can move it. Exactly. From, yeah. So this means that you don't have to get up on a ladder. You don't have to get up on top of your stand. Um, or you can even place this in a tall crane with, in a basket uh, and then a remotely operating. That's either manually on the control box it's with side its length, or of course, which most of these professionals will be using over DMX, over Lumen Radio CRMX, ArmNet SAC and control. This has all the connectivity and this throughout this entire system. That's, you're gonna be able to control the electronic motorized yoke in any of those situations. Now the motorized yoke has both a junior pin as well as complementary hooks. So if you're mounting on a stand, mounting on a tall stand, maybe you use the junior pin to mount it. But especially if you want to use that full tilt range and the bottom and also undersling it from your crane, what you're gonna be able to do is remove the junior pin, install your truss hooks, and then mount it to speed rail pipe or truss pipe. Mm. so that you can really use it like a moving, moving head. Mm. But just as a note, the motorized yoke is not a moving head, it's made for positioning. So mm. we will keep trying to optimize the firmware, but it's never gonna be as flying free and smooth as a moving head you might have on stage. But it'll get you the position you need for your light. And then combined with the motorized Fresnel, it's gonna get you the same right positioning of your light as well. But and those aren't the only things that make the Electrostorm the Electrostorm. It's not just the electronic motorized functions. It's the build quality. These build lights are built like tanks. They're built to take a beating and they're both IP65. In fact, all the accessories are IP65. That's the Fresnel, that's the motorized yoke, and that's both the lamp heads and the control boxes. Everything is IP65 in the system because I'm in LA. Everything is fairly dry there, it rarely rains. But we have customers in Florida, or for people in Europe, we have customers in Finland, in Sweden, in Norway, where it rains a ton. In London, it rains a ton. And you're gonna need lights that are gonna be able to withstand that beating. So all the accessories and the lights are IP65 as well. Now on top of that, we also invested a lot of time and energy into getting the finer details right for our high-end clients. And one of those things is our flicker-free functionality. So flicker and high frame rates are intertwined and are very important to our high-end customers. So our lights perform even better now with our new advanced PWM system. So that means that we're able to get better flick-free performance in normal frame rates um, and through normal dimming modes. But if, for example, for whatever reason, you start to encounter something, you can turn on our high-speed mode. In a high-speed mode, you begin to use constant current dimming, and you're going to be able to get infinitely flicker-free performance at basically any frame rate throughout the range. So if you're going 5,000 frames per second, 10,000 frames per second, and you're starting to see something, switch over to high-speed mode, and you should be perfectly fine. What's the penalty of using this? It reduces the output or the, something else? The penalty does, isn't reduced output because we know that you need the most output. The, penal, the, the limitation is that you have a limited dimming range of 50% to 100%. And that's because below 50%, you start to uh, enter potential color shift issues that we don't want you to see. So we're giving you the best color possible within the bright range, because especially when you're shooting high-speed mode, you're gonna really need that top end Exactly, anyways. yes. Now, in addition to that flicker-free functionality, and despite being such big lights, I just mentioned in high-speed mode, you're always gonna wanna use them at your max brightness. Well, every single time I talk to a high-end gaffer, every single time I talk to a, a television DP, a movie DP, about what they need from the lights, they're like, I don't care how big the light is, I want it also to dim low. I'm like, what do you mean, right? You might be saying like, these lights are big lights. They're meant to compete with the sunlight and meant to compete with daylight. Sometimes you want that big look. You want that big look with this big Fresnel. And as big as these lights are, every single time I get a gaffer, tune it to just 5%, 1%, 0.1%. And what I'm happy to say is that we've worked on the driver technology for these new lights soup a lot. And we worked on it to optimize it such that 0.1% on this light is actually 0.1%. So we measured the lux. 100% lux at a few meters away, and then we measured the lux again at 0.1%, and we were able to get something fairly close to basically that measurement at 0.1% intensity setting. So we really hounded down, worked on the cooling, we worked on the drivers, we worked on the optimization of everything in the curve to get that point with as minimal of a color shift as we can get. Because at the end of the day, they said, we need something that dims even dimmer. And I said, okay, we'll give you that, we'll optimize the color as best we can, and this is what we ended up with with the Electrostorm lineup. Lights that have exceptional low end dimming performance, that are super bright, that can shoot at infinitely high flicker free frame rates, that are motorized, that give you everything you need out of a professional picture that it's really meant to compete with, be comparable to, or ultimately replace 
a lot of HMIs, HMIs that are single color, that do shift over time, that dim over time over the length of a bulb. Um, this light right here is comparable to an M40 at about like 80% the output of an M40 with a narrow reflector. And as that M40 uh, increases in age, that bulb is gonna get a little bit dimmer. It's gonna shift a little greener. And especially with this guy, not only is it light gonna stay relatively consistent, that green magenta shift, you're gonna be able to tweak a little bit. So we're creating these lights, hopefully for our professionals to use for hours, days, and months and years to come. So this, both of these lights basically are still prototypes, am I yes, right? Yes, both of these lights that I have right here are still prototypes. Uh, we're looking to release these in about mid Q4. We're getting really close. We're just doing the last few tweaks, last few firmware updates, tweaking everything from the little pieces of feedback we're getting, adding a little cable here and there, adding a little cable tie here or there. It's doing those last touches to make sure that these are as good as we can get them for our end users. Now, these are big lights, so they do come with, of course, a trolley for the controller as well. Um, and really made so that you can get everything you need to use it on set fairly easily. Have you announced pricing for them? We do not have pricing quite yet. That's probably gonna get announced closer to or yeah. at the time of yeah. release. So that's looking like in a couple of months. Okay, and I wanna ask you something which is unrelated to this, something yeah. that you announced, I think, fairly recently before the, the show here. Uh, you basically to, uh, mentioned or announced that you acquired a ProLite. Uh, yeah. So maybe you can say a few things about this. You know, why does this acquisition happen and how it is going to affect like what you can do in the future? Yeah, of course. So Ted and Mitch just gave a wonderful presentation about this yesterday, about our vision for the future. But just so everyone knows, we acquired ProLite Lighting just a few weeks ago or just about a month ago. Um, and they're a great addition to the family already. Our teams are already getting together, having great thoughts about what we can do together using our combined technology, technologies and using our combined knowledge. So while we don't have a product to present right now, because it only was just a month or so, um, we are looking forward to the future and saying, hey, what they can do with their knowledge and what we can do together is going to enhance us even further. Because the reason that we decided to partner together is we have a lot of great minds on our team. I don't want to discount the team in any way because we have a lot of smart people. And then with the new additions to the company recently, we have uh, a lot of people joining us from throughout the industry, industry professionals who are really raising the bar. But at the same time, where we want to go has a very high ceiling and we want to move there even faster. And we think that we can get there even faster with the team at ProLight and with their technology and with their knowledge. So we're hoping that within the next year, next two years, in the next three years, we're going to be able to achieve the goals that we set out for the next three, five, and 10 years that much faster. That sounds great. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Brandon. Of course. And uh, make sure that you watch out more videos on Lensved from IBC. See you in the next one.